welcome back everybody to another episode of the Rocking Midlife podcast. Now we have an incredible lady today. We've just been chatting and you are going to love this lady's philosophy on life and I'm going to be welcoming Sama Badu. Welcome, it's lovely to have you here. Thanks Kat, I'm excited to be here too, been looking forward to it. I should point out everybody that's tuning in, whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening to the audio, Sama is actually a fellow Australian but as you all know, I've lived in New Zealand for 23 years, so that's my home. And she is currently house-sitting her way around the UK, which is another incredible conversation I'd love to delve into down the track. She's doing this with her husband and basically getting a holiday by mining people's homes and yet still working as they go. So cool fact, cool fact. But anyhow, today's conversation, I think you're going to love today's conversation. This lady is amazing. And we're talking about the subject of it's never too late or you're never too old to take a totally new journey to an unexpected place. And the unexpected place that Sarah is going to be talking to us about today is her work as a life model, which she started doing in her midlife years. So Sama, I'm sure people are already intrigued. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you ended up being a life model. Thanks, Kat. Um, it sort of came out of the blue. I was friends with a writing friend who I knew did life modelling and I'd see her posts on Facebook and more on Instagram where she'd post pictures of work artists had done of her in classes and stuff and always beautiful work and I was just really intrigued and I had a chat to her about it and she was actually a committee member of the Life Model Society, which Melbourne is lucky enough to have, which is an organisation that um, puts models together and trains them as well. That's, that's, that's thought, crazy. I had no idea there was even such a thing around, well, a Life many, Model Society. Well, not many cities, I think, from chatting to people in other countries even, we're very lucky to have that. It's not a very common thing and a lot of Life Models sort of have to work it out for themselves and friends for themselves. But it just intrigued me. I love art and I've never sort of had issues with feeling embarrassed or ashamed of being naked in front of people. And I just thought, I love art. I like artists. I like being creative. I've sort of studied ballet all my life. I like using my body to make shapes. And I just thought, well, that sounds like fun. So I went along and did, they run a couple of training sessions a year. Went along and did one of those, applied to join the society, got put on their books and started getting work. And I just never looked back, loved, loved the training, loved the people. Uh, the training involved having artists there as well. I just loved the whole vibe of it. And, yeah, just never looked back after that. That's, that's just amazing. Now, for our listeners and our viewers, do you mind me asking how old are you and how old were you when you started doing I'm that? 68 now uh-huh. um, and I did start. Well, I started pre-COVID. It's just the COVID years sort of just seemed to Yeah, a bit of a blur there. Uh, so I, was, I, think I, was, yeah, I think I was 64 when I right. started. Yeah. That is yeah. just so cool. And and what's been the reaction to friends and family suddenly learning that mum or, you know, sister or <laughs> auntie or whatever is suddenly taking off her clothes in front of bunches of strangers? Well, I mean, husband's been supportive right through of anything yeah. I want to do. So that, that was just the given I knew that wasn't even an issue. I have to say because I also write steamy romance and stuff. Oh, there we and, go. <laughs> uh, they were pretty much, why are we not surprised, pretty much. So, yeah. and, but they supportive. I don't show them examples of work of me and stuff. It's, I think my I think my daughter-in-law is on my Insta, so she sees it. But they're just supportive of whatever I do and don't see anything wrong with it and just think it's pretty cool. And Best. friends are, are safe. Well, nobody said anything to my face. <laughs> I only ever had positive responses from people yeah. who I've told. So, yeah. That is so cool. And, you know, it's it's not so it's not so about the like the titillation of oh my gosh she's taking her clothes off. Oh. It's it's more about the fact that the body confidence that that you've got in doing that, and yeah. and and doing it at your age, just going actually, yeah. what the hell? And I love that. And yeah. that's kind of one of your philosophies, isn't it, about aging? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, absolutely. And it's sort of I mean you hear it over <clears> the years that when you're younger that the older you get the less you worry about what people say and it yeah. sort of sneaks up on you. And I'm definitely at that point where I think I'm happy with how I look. I mean, I certainly don't have the 
lovely silk body I had when I was in my 20s or even my 30s. And I think, well, this is, so this is it. Everyone's going to end up pretty much like this. I don't care. The artists don't care. And other model, the models come in all shapes and sizes from their 20s to, to my age. I think that world particularly is really good for body confidence because it's not about how perfect you look. It's, and I've actually had asked to say, it's really nice to have a more mature model because the body is more interesting to draw yeah. than a, a beautiful, tight, taut, perfect body. So yeah. It's a real confidence booster that people see value in the way you look. That is that is lovely. As, as, as the, the not perfect look. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. So so it's like artists are looking for real and authentic, not like you're saying, not necessarily a perfect exterior, but a real lived yeah. in body. Well, I think that they're happy to like because they have will have different models at most sessions over the years and stuff, but and they're happy to draw whoever they get. Mm -hmm. But I just have had those few comments that it is nice to have a body with a bit more, you know, a few more lumps and bumps and, yeah. <laughs> and stuff to draw that rather than your, your lovely sleek lines. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And, yeah, so talking about the artists, I was just going to ask you what they're thinking about it, but are you, do you get a lot of work, I guess, is the question I'm trying to spit out here. Do, are you popular? <laughs> are you in demand? Oh, well, it's hard to gauge what a lot of work is, but I would say if I, like last year, if I averaged everything out, I probably was working once a week. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not my day job or anything yeah. like that. I'm doing it because I love it. But probably I would average out at one, one job a week. And um, for me, that's good. It's not taking up all my time. It's just a day out to, to do what I love. And, yeah, so uh, I've got regular places that book me, yeah. um, art societies, usually like local community art societies and some schools. And I just know I'm going to get a booking from them every term or every every couple of months. So, yeah, it's good. And there's always new ones coming up as well, but I've definitely got a, a pool of regular people who book me. Yeah, that's that's so cool. I love it because it's ticking so many boxes, isn't it? It's creativity, it's body confidence, mm. and it's also a nice yeah. little side hustle, extra stream of income, which, you know, we all Absolutely. really need. And so it, well, it it's really... It's fun to holiday. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's just amazing that something like that, that... You know, you don't need any skills for, so really anybody can go do. It's just about being confident in yourself, yeah. isn't it? It's not like yeah. you have to go learn yeah. how to run computers or, or whatever. It's no, like anyone no. can actually potentially do this. Well, absolutely, as long as you are capable of sitting still for yeah. 20 minutes, which, yeah, which a lot of people say, oh, I couldn't do that, I'm too fidgety. But I don't know, I think I'm quite a calm person and I have, have had the comments actually about, how still I am. Wow. But I just find it a good time to think about writing and, <laughs> and, and yeah. about life and stuff. And and we have people, I mean, there are people modelling who are from all walks of life. And it is, if you've got a little bit of creativity in you to sort of be able to put your body in anything other than just like I'm just sitting there, but yeah. add a bit of flair to it, it is something that, that anybody can do absolutely that's amazing so just tell us all, really briefly just a little bit about your background and also your writing because you're a writer as well you're a novelist and how yep. long have you been doing that my background is just worked in corporate career-wise most of my life I've also as I've mentioned I've um, done ballet all my life so I've always had that sort of creative part and I've, I think I've been writing something since my teens right. in my 20s started writing steamy romance and Goodness. yeah just lots of different creative yeah. outlets and it's really cool to be able to combine um like I said the the dancing really works in well with, with the modeling with just being aware of what my body's doing and what what shapes look good and, and stuff so it all sort of works in together and I've written a couple of stories about a life model as well, one which right. finaled in a writing contest. So it's all sort of all blends in together. That's amazing. And I love it. And look, so you're, you're what did you say, 67. So, you know, some people your age would be like, 
kicking back like this is retirement time now and I'm just going to sit back on my porch and chill out and I've worked hard. <laughs> That's not you, is it? <laughs> well, I was always hanging out for retirement because there was so much other stuff, me stuff I wanted to do that you couldn't fit in when you've got kids growing up and then you've got a job and stuff. So I was just hanging out for the, the time where I can just do what I want and that's what I'm doing now and loving it. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, that, I mean, that's one of the the ethos that, you know, I talk about a lot with midlife, you know, and I say midlife's anywhere from age 40 upwards. And uh -huh. it is, it's that time yeah. when we, we get time to discover ourselves yep. again, isn't it? And it's just crazy how you've gone from Absolutely. this corporate career into this totally creative life of life modeling and, <laughs> and writing and and traveling. Yep. And you know, it's it's fabulous. I, I just love it. So what tips would you yep. have for other women though who are hitting these midlife years, their 50s and their 60s, and they they've got that bit of time opening up, but maybe they're a bit afraid or they feel selfish about about using it. What what would you say to those sort of people? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the selfish thing. I have I don't know, I used to even when I was doing the mother thing. I love that the mother what, thing. <laughs> what, what's wrong with being selfish? I need yeah. to look after me so that I'm happy, so I can be happy doing the mothering and, and all the other bits and pieces. So, I've, I, yeah, I don't know whether that's unusual or not, but I've never seen it as being selfish. It's just like, oh, no, I'm entitled to have me as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's just wonderful having more time to do that when you are older. I have grandkids, but they're not nearby. And um, sometimes I go, I'm such a bad grandmother, but... I've never been one of those people who, oh, I can't wait to have the grandkids and just look after them all the time. I thought, oh, sorry, but I've got stuff I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love them and I love yeah. seeing them when I can see them, but I'm just thinking, no, this is my time now. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's probably good advice for women too. If, if you love that, do it. But yeah. for me, I'm thinking, but, but I want to do this and I want to do that. And <laughs> I think you've nailed it there. It's like it's finding that balance between what do you love and and taking the time to do that and still being able to give Absolutely. and appreciate and love your family. Yep. But but taking away yep. that guilt factor that it should be all yep. about your family, which is what you've probably done for yep. the last couple of decades anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's good that my kids also support I think yeah. they appreciate that I have stuff that I'm doing, even though it might be inconvenient for them sometimes. But I think they, I think they think it's pretty cool that you know, mum's not yeah. just sitting on the couch knitting. <laughs> yeah, I said that to my son the other day. He was having a nag at me about something silly, stirring me up, and I said, "Well, hey, at least, you know, how many mums do you know are doing dot 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 dot? At least I'm having a go, hey." And he was sort of like, exactly. oh, "Yeah, you're right." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is brilliant. Now, where, where though, so you're in this world of life modelling. Have there been times, though, where your age has held you back? Has that been a mental thing or a physical thing or has it just not been an issue at all? It's not been an issue because from the very first day when I went in to do the training, there were other older potential models in with me as well as wow. the young, gorgeous ones. And so I knew it was a world where age wasn't a thing. And there were some older experienced models like running the training mm -hmm. who were probably not my age but older and they had been doing it for so long. So it was pretty obvious from day one that age wasn't an issue and it wasn't holding anyone back. And I'm sure there's some that prefer maybe the younger ones and stuff, but just my experience has been from day one that it's just accepted that it's the whole age range and older models are, are just as valuable. Wow. Oh, that's that's brilliant. It's nice to know that in in one area of, of the world, yep. older models are appreciated given that they can get such a hard time Absolutely. in so many other areas. Yep. So it's kind of refreshing yep. to hear that really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it was re just reassuring to see. I mean, nobody says it, you know, verbally, but you can just see by who's around, who's working, and just from talking to experienced people, that it's not an issue. Yeah. 
So your sort of personal attitude, I'll read it out for everybody because when I asked what were some of the takeaways that Sama might like to share, and I'll, I'll let her speak about one of them later on, but there was one that I really loved and that was that the older you get, the less Fs you give about what anyone thinks and it's so liberating. Yeah. Was that something that you suddenly like, boing, that, that suddenly popped into your head in your midlife years or is it something that you gradually came to kind of realise that? This is how you were yeah, feeling as I, you got older. It wasn't a conscious thing, but then I'd stop and think about what I'm doing or what mm -hmm. I've said or how I'm feeling, and I'd think, oh, when did, when did I start feeling like that? I was never sort of super worried about what people thought, but you are aware of it when you're yeah, younger and stuff. You and are. I, I just got, got to a point and suddenly thought, oh, I don't care anymore. I care about what the people that I care about think. Yeah family, close friends, what you think matters to me, anyone else, whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. And that's a philosophy you would encourage other women to, to grow into too oh. as we age? If you think you're holding back from doing or saying things, absolutely, yeah. Just, yeah, just have a think about why, why does it matter, why someone who doesn't matter to you thinks. Your favorite saying was my husband's and I was, I can't remember who said it, it is what what anybody else thinks of me is none of my business. So you've got other women that are coming through, they're hitting their midlife years, you know, their 40s and 50s and 60s, they're finding yep. they've got time, but they've got self-doubt about stepping mm. into something new. What's given you the courage to step into new things? I should add that I originally met you, Sama, through a mutual writing program that we're both involved in. Yep. And, and that was a yep. new step for me. And it's that's obviously been a new step for you to go into those type of, you know, where we're learning yep. publishing and everything. What's, yep. what's given you the drive and the courage to do new things like that? And what would you say to other ladies? I think that I think it's just sort of crept up on me having yeah. the time. You know, done quite a bit of reading and interest in like personal growth and mindset and stuff yes. whether that's just sort of permeated in without me consciously thinking about it and just over over the years my mindset has just changed without trying yeah I, I would say that probably is playing a big part of it actually because I'm the same the things mm. I've read and listened to and the people that I've allowed mm. to speak into my life through whatever yeah. courses or mentoring or whatever I've found that yeah. that's contributed yeah. to like you said, may, might not be a, you know, bing, come to Jesus moment just on that spot, but you yeah. realise suddenly, yeah. oh, actually, yeah. I, I am stronger and I am more confident, I am braver. Yeah. I think once if you've got a passion and then you find you're enjoying it and maybe even good at it, that sort of boosts you as, as well. As yeah. If, yeah. But even if you're not good at it, like I've done ballet all my life and I went back to adult ballet, after stopping for 10 years and the body sort of <laughs> doesn't cope too well. But I still love it. I know I'm pretty crap at it, but I still love it and it's a passion and that sort of overrides it. I just think, well, I don't care if I don't look as good as her behind me. <laughs> I'm loving the moment. I'm so glad you said that because I think that's another fear we have, especially those of us who have tried so hard to do well in school and all this business. And, mm. and so we get scared to try new things because we yeah. may not master it. We might not look good. We might mm. look like idiots. And, and I love yeah. that you said that we can just enjoy the journey, enjoy just yeah. the doing without having to be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Just find... I mean, yeah, if you have it like a secret passion, like there's so many ladies at this ballet school who said, oh, I always wanted to do ballet when I was little, but I never got the chance. And now in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they're starting ballet. And then it's a school specifically for adults. It's just wonderful to see all these people who wanted to do this all their lives and suddenly found a place where they can do it without judgment. That's cool. There's, there's two sides to that, isn't there? One, it's wonderful those women have stepped out to do that and number two is not wonderful that there's organizations or places that are yep. bringing in classes that yep. make that doable yep. I think I think that's possibly a little niche yep. there any business owners entrepreneurs oh, listening absolutely. in yeah yeah, yeah. yeah things well, like that specifically adults adults only no kids yeah. Their classes and, yeah. yeah, and that can go yeah. for so many different skills it could be sports skills mm. or martial arts or ballet mm. or yeah, yeah. 
oh boy, the business brain's sparking here, thinking, oh, all these ideas. <laughs> Except I've got books to write, so I've got to keep a focus on what I'm meant to be yeah, doing. Me too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Sam, I just love your zest for life. I love that you're just getting out there, like you said, not giving an F about anyone else other than the people that mean something to you. I mean, you're not hurting people, I should add, but you know what I mean? You're just getting out and living your life and trying new things. And I mean, here you are touring England by house sitting while still writing. So you're you're having like this working holiday without paying for accommodation. I mean, that's genius. That's incredible. So I'm going to ask you the big question. Do you have one or two takeaways that you would really, really like people to hear from your story? Well, the big one is like your topic for tonight is you are never too old to either find something you never even thought you might be interested in or to follow up on something that you always thought, oh, I'd love to do that and then just never done it for whatever reason. Yeah. But once you get to the stage where you have the time, just, and well, I suppose this goes into my second point, is don't just talk about it, do it. You don't have to be good at it. You might not even enjoy it. But if it's something you've always thought, oh, I wish I could, just, yes. just do it. Yes, I love that. It's, it's like don't die with regrets, isn't it? Absolutely not. No, just try new stuff. Some, some might stick and it'll be a passion for life and some will be, oh, no, that wasn't what I expected, but at least you had a go and you but tried you something tried. new. and. You don't know what you'll find along the way. <laughs> Absolutely. You never know. You might end up taking off your clothes to groups of strangers That's in an right. art class. You never know where it yeah. will lead. I know. More power to you, girl. I just, I love Thanks. that you're not this big whiz-bang entrepreneur coming in to tell everybody to do this. You're a woman who's out there just living her life courageously and with fun and with joy and I think that is such a big encouragement for for people who are listening so thank you so much for being with us thank you it's been fun oh absolutely it's been really cool so everybody listening in I'm going to be including all of Sama's links and you'll be able to find her books and get on her mailing list and and get in her world and just be encouraged by this when I say ordinary lady, I'm not saying that in a negative way, but, but she is no, an every woman. She's an every woman. She's a lovely, lovely lady who's living her life to the fullest. And to me, that's what we're all, you know, that's what I aspire to be. So I take courage and I take encouragement from seeing Sama, who's a few years ahead oh, of me, living it out. So thank you again, Sama, and we will see everybody else on the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.